I'm Ryan Homan, Vice President of Friends of Cancer Research. I want to thank Dr. Fauci uh, for that conversation, for sticking around and answering a couple of questions with us this evening. Great to see you, Dr. Fauci. Good to be with you, Ryan. Thank you for having me with you. Thank you. You and Dr. Collins have shared a lot of important information. You're one of the busiest people in the world, so we won't keep you long. I will say when the thousands that signed up for this heard you take a few questions, uh, we got a lot of questions, but every time before they put forth their question, they said, make sure you tell Dr. Fauci, thank you for all you're doing for the country. So on behalf of all of us at Friends and around the country, thank you. Thank you, Ryan, for saying that. I appreciate it. Um, our first question for you, Dr. Fauci, comes from your friend, Ellen Siegel. Hey, Tony, and thank all of you for sticking with us. Sorry about the technical diff difficulties. I guess we live in Zoom world today, and this is what happens. Tony, before I ask, a question I have to and want to give deep gratitude for all that you're doing and have done and the work that over the uh, decades and decades of public service and public health, you are a national treasure, an international treasure, and thank you so much. We are so appreciative of everything you're doing and particularly now in COVID when we need you desperately. Um, as you know, there's a lot of concern about science and the politicalization of science and its concerns to all of us and a lot of information about the vaccine that people do not understand and the process of the vaccine and what it means and all the steps. And one of them particularly is the, uh, the Data Science Monitoring Committee, DSMB, and what that means. And I think there's a lot of information that the public would actually benefit if you can take us through that and take us through the process. It would be enormously helpful. So again, great thank you to you for everything and just help us understand what that means. Yeah, thank you very much, uh, Ellen. Uh, first of all, thank you for having me on this program. And thank you for that very important question. So we have now, uh, I had said three in the conversation with Francis, but we're now up to five of the six vaccines that the federal government is making a major investment is in fact in phase three trial. Uh, each of those trials has what we call a common data and safety monitoring board. And that stands for what we call the DSMB. It's an independent board that is beholden to no one politically, not to the FDA, not to the company, not to the president, not to the Congress. It's an independent board made up of scientists, vaccinologists, statisticians, and ethicists. And it's a traditional way that we guarantee that science drives the process because this independent group meets at predetermined times to look at the data from those trials that I mentioned are already ongoing. And each of those trials has a protocol of a predetermined point when one can declare whether it's effective or not, as well as obviously looking for safety. And in that situation, the only person who can see the data is the unblinded statistician from the Data and Safety Monitoring Board. And when that person looks at the data, intermittently, they could come to one of four, well, three important conclusions. A, the data are fine, but you don't have enough to make a conclusion. Keep the study going. Or we're looking at the data now, and my goodness, there seems to be more infections in the virus group, excuse me, in the vaccine group than in the placebo. So we better stop this because it's not safe. Or what we would hope happens is that eventually when you look at the data, you'd say, we've got it. There is such a difference between the placebo and the vaccine group that we can declare that this vaccine has met the predetermined specifications for efficacy. In fact, we can even tell you statistically how effective it would be. At that point, the data is available to the company, which then looks at the data and likely will do one of two things. We'll go to the FDA, for either an emergency use authorization or for a BLA, an actual licensure, a biological license applic application. And so the FDA now gets their career scientist, again, not political people, looking at that data and analyzing it independently. 
They then share the data with another advisory committee called the VERPAC committee, which again is another independent committee that advises the FDA. The FDA commissioner has vowed publicly that he would not let any political considerations influence determinations about safety, efficacy, and licensure, be that emergency or BLA. And when that happens, those data become public, Ellen, which means scientists like myself, scientists like Francis Collins and all of our colleagues have access to them. So there's a lot of transparency in the process. It's science driven and it's evaluated by people who have no political influence or no political stake at anything. It's the independent scientific group. And because of that, I expressed confidence and I do that in fact, the FDA will do what they've done so well for such a long period of time they will look at the science and make their decision based upon the evaluation of the science of the efficacy and the science of the safety. So important, very important. Our next question uh, tonight comes from uh, a friend of friends, uh, Penny Abramson. Dr. Fauci, on behalf of the non-scientific community, I really want to thank you wholeheartedly for all that you're doing and um, your, your, your influence. Um, and also, I want to tell you that I'm not getting the vaccine until you and Ellen Siegel get it, so I'll know that it's good. Uh, can you please explain more of what will happen once we get a vaccine authorized by the FDA? Who is likely to get it first? And how will the public know when they should seek it out over the months after? Okay, so let me just introduce that, uh, my answer to saying that we are making projections that we will know whether a vaccine is safe and effective uh, sometime around November, December. It could be early, it's conceivable it could be October, but my projection and that of my colleagues is more likely November, December. There's never a guarantee that it's gonna be safe and effective, but I have a cautious optimism based on preliminary data that I've looked at in animals, as well as the preliminary phase one data, that this is a vaccine, vaccines plural, that induce good response that you would predict would be protective. Now, what has happened is that in order to at risk proceed, at financial risk, not safety risk, the federal government has invested hundreds of millions, if not billions of dollars to make doses so that when the decision is made in either November or December, we can begin vaccinating people. So specifically to your question, when you start off and you don't have the 700 million doses that you will need for a prime boost for every American, how do you prioritize? It's a time honored process. It's the CDC ultimately makes the decision upon advice of the Advisory Committee on Immunization Practices. This is standard. We do it all the time. Another layer, has been added to that because of the seriousness of the COVID-19, is that the NIH and the CDC have asked, excuse me, NIH and the CDC have asked the National Academy of Medicine to put together a group to supplement and complement that decision-making process. When that process is made, we don't know who they are gonna be, but it is likely based on other situations that we've been in, that healthcare providers will be prioritized to get it early, if not first, because they put themselves at risk. Secondly, it's those who are at risk for serious consequences, the elderly, those with underlying conditions. And then you go down the line until you get to everybody else, the normal healthy people who are not at increased risk. So it's a prioritization that's standard when you're dealing with a vaccine that initially will be in short supply, but eventually everyone will be able to get the vaccine. So important. Uh, I promised I wouldn't keep you long. Uh, so again, thank you, thank you. Uh, take care and we'll see you soon, Dr. Fauci. Thank you, Ryan. Thank you for having me. It's good to be with you. <laughs>